Yeah. I pull up roto window down it. I pull up roto window down it. Yeah. I pull up roto window down it. Hi, hotties, kettles, tea stirs. You're here for hot tea. All commentary is alleged, and in my opinion, this is for entertainment purposes only. While you're here, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit the post notification bell so you guys are up to date each and every time that I upload. Get the f out of here. Go be with your bitch, you or. Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I ended up in this situation. Then we'll speak. Hey, May. I see you got on your May I feel like you always do. In my opinion, this is where it all started. The continuous toxic cycle of degrading, embarrassing, and humiliating Black women. Now, granted, it didn't start with just Carlos. But in my opinion, this interaction, this scene kicked off the entire cycle when it came to Carlos King and Kingdom Reign Entertainment. And unfortunately, he was able to do it off of the back of another black woman and her embarrassment, pain, suffering, and humiliation. Who really knows who Carlos King was prior to him filming Love and Hip Hop Atlanta with the toxic dynamic thruple duo Mimi, Stevie J, and Jocelyn. We'll get into Carlos King backstory in another video. Right now, I just want to talk about where I believe the cycle started and continued. Our community is so used to humiliating black women and degrading black women. I don't think a lot of us or a lot of people realize what this season did to our community. And not just this season, but a lot of the shows that popped off around this time. And we kind of have to give props to the producers that produced these shows, right? Ain't that what you're clean with? You need to buy her a fur like you bought me one. Now, Carlos has a long rap sheet of reality shows, and let's give him credit for that, right? Because we are not here to knock it, even though that's what them hoes keep trying to convince people. But most people want to know why is his track record so detrimental when it comes to other Black women in his relationships with them, protecting them, respecting them, how he does business with them, etc. In one breath, we hear Carlos King saying protect Black women, and then in the next breath, we see him co-sign their distress almost as if he gets off on it and to me Carlos is just a pandering ass man He's in it for the drama, the entertainment, the money, and for himself. His track record doesn't necessarily say that he is morally equipped to deal with the challenges of Black women. And his track record, to me, makes me want to question his integrity. So let's deep dive into it. These are just a few of the women that have spoken out against Carlos King, Kingdom Reign Entertainment. But in my opinion, definitely not all. I do believe there are a lot of women that just have not come out and spoke about their mistreatment when it came to being in a workspace when it comes to Carlos King. And something that I thought was interesting that Winter revealed in the interview that she did with Queen Sheba was the fact that Kingdom Reign has no HR. And I want to know, is that even legal? While these women have concerns and issues and questions, who is it that they can go to to consult with about these issues that they may or may not be having? with his entertainment company. And shouts out to Reviews and Recap because I check out her channel from time to time and she was speaking about an incident that took place while Elise Neal was filming Hollywood Divas. And you guys know that Carlos King was one of the executive producers of Hollywood Divas. It's actually under his Kingdom Reign Entertainment portfolio, which you guys saw. So this article says, Elise Neal has claimed she has left Hollywood Divas after suffering a head injury while filming the TV One reality show. The 49-year-old actress said she was filming at a bowling alley when a light fixture broke and hit her in the head, according to an article on Sunday by TMZ. 
The Hughley star claimed that production attempted to cover up the incident and continued filming as if nothing happened. It says the Hustle and Flow actress said producers have refused to pay for her medical bills that include costs for x-rays and MRIs. It says Hollywood Divas ran for two seasons on the TV One network and also featured Paula J. Parker, Golden Brooks. And shout out to Golden Brooks. I had tagged her saying that people think me and her look alike and she DM'd me and said thank you because up under the post I was seeing how beautiful she was and if I was to age looking like that then I'm so blessed and I can't wait. Lisa Wu and Countess from the Parkers and I'm not gonna lie I did enjoy Hollywood Divas. It says the show premiered in October 2014 and its second season finale aired on September 16th 2015. It also states Hollywood divas followed the black actresses as they navigated their careers, family, and friends. The show executive producer include Todd Tucker, who is married to the Real Housewives of Atlanta star Candy Burrs. Elise is best known for playing Yvonne Hughley in the TV sitcom The Hughleys for four seasons. The Memphis, Tennessee native also has appeared in more than a dozen feature films. Her film credits include Scream 2, Hustle and Flow, and the 2000 movie Love Ranch starring Kristen Stewart. She has a starring role in a comedy, What Are the Chances Do Out This Year? Elise also has a featured role in a romantic comedy, 36 Hour Layover, currently in post-production. We're going to talk about Candy, Todd, and Carlos King fallout in this video as well so keep in mind that Todd was also a executive producer of Hollywood Divas alongside of Carlos King. So this article reads this summer the careers and personal lives of the TV One's Hollywood Divas cast are hotter than ever as actresses Golden Brooks, Paula Jai, Parker, Countess, Lisa Wu and Elise Neal returned for season two on new night on a new night premiering Wednesday, July 15th at 9 p.m. It says the one hour docudrama kicks off as the ladies experience major career resurgencies, juggling work life balance and make romance a greater priority. It states it's undeniable that Hollywood has experienced remarkable progress in recent years with more film opportunities carved out and created specifically with black actresses in mind, said D'Angela Proctor, SVP, original programming and production. This season, viewers will get a chance to see major upward movement in the Hollywood Divas career as, re as a result of Tinseltown's intensified interest in casting Black actresses as well as ladies' roles behind the camera as content creators for joint projects. And when I first heard them say the name D'Angela, I was thinking of his producer, Angela, because we do know that his producer, Angela Dugan, um, no longer works with him. And we're going to get into that as well. So just keep all this stuff in mind. And let's get into Candy and her issues with Carlos King. Recent interview, Candy Burris made some strong accusations against Carlos King, the former executive producer of The Real Housewives of Atlanta. She accused King of stealing Escape's life story behind her back. When asked why she and Carlos King are no longer friends, Candy said he was the one who stole my group's life story and sold it to TV One. What do you think about her claims? Al, what do you think about this? This is this was really weird. I had never seen uh, Candy go so hard on someone and calling, you know, she cursed. But Claudia Funky and I, we've all worked with him. He's all given us opportunities to work in a business and he's created a number of media stars. I'm wondering if there was just some type of disagreement or misunderstanding of some sorts. We know we you know, Candy's not a liar. Um, we know that uh, she's lived a very transparent and above board life. And 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 Carlos, we don't know. We don't know Carlos as being a person who t steal people's stories or whatever. So I'm just hoping that it's a misunderstanding. But you know what, guys, don't forget Carlos and Todd. Candy's husband created that number one show, The Encore, over at BET last season. It got picked up for another season. So do you think this beef between Candy and Carlos is going to spill over on this number one show that Todd and Carlos has at BET? I, I think so. I mean, if that's the way she feels, you know, it's like, yeah. him static, which sucks because they created magic together. And I love both of them. Q, what do you think? Well, obviously, uh, Candy's uh, feelings about Carlos um, don't roll, spill over into Carlos and Todd's business too much because remember Carlos was the one who was accused of telling Phaedra the um you know the the, the I want to drug you and rape you and take you to the sex dungeon stuff with uh Portia and Phaedra. So either way, um Carlos is a friend of mine. Candy used to once manage me. Um Tom, uh, Carlos had office space in Candy's studio 
at once upon a time. Now, I don't know if what Candy's saying is the truth. Candy doesn't lie. But if it is the truth, it's effed up. If, it, if, if you're going to sell those people's life story and, and, and a deal is going to be made on their life story, I feel like all four of the members should have been a part of any deal about their life story that was presented to anyone and sold right. to anyone. That, that, that's just decent. And she was so um, visibly shaking when she was telling the story and her voice was cracking and people kind of get Yeah, because it. they they operate in close proximity of each other. You know what I'm saying? Like, we've been in close yeah. proximity. We've worked together. You've known me all this time. Like I said, I don't know if it's true or false, but if it is true, just as a friend, as a friend, oh. it's jacked up. Um, and outside of friendship, it's just messed up to take somebody who's living and take their life story and pitch it somewhere, and they're not a part of the deal. How are you going to capitalize off of my stuff? I will say this. Uh, Candy did say that um, Carlos did not tell Paige that lie. People in the chat are saying that. So I know okay. that. Yeah, so she did clear that up. One thing I do like about Candy is she is fair. Like, just because she's mad at someone, she's not going to say, yeah, and they did that too. They did that. She's going to stick to her story. She's not going to just put a little extra on it. Aries 88 says she said uh, he was around them to get information on them, even asked her mom questions. She thought they were friends. So I hope they can work it out because they did make some good shows together. The main reason, my main issue with Carlos is he is the one who stole my group's um, life story and sold it to TV1. And for that, I just can't get past it. He had been working with us that entire season on the Real Housewives of Atlanta last year. He was with us. Um, him and Ty had already had some like little issues, business issues, because they were doing a production company together. So they already had some things they had dealt with personally. But, you know, we were trying to move past that and still work together on the show because he was executive producing. What season was that? Nine or whatever? Yes. And he was his last year. Okay. So let's say the season wrapped in November. In mm -hmm. December, someone tells me, um, I was talking to a friend. I was like, hey, yeah, I was like, yeah, we should do like a movie about, um, you know, our, our okay. life or whatever. And they were like, they were, it was a director that Todd and I were speaking. And they was like, somebody's already doing it. And I was like, what you mean somebody's doing it? And so in my mind, I'm thinking it was one of my group members or something. Mm -hmm. And they was like, yeah, it's a network that's already like, because I took a meeting about directing it. And I was like, what? Now, mind you, just wrapped season, in the, the season in like the top of December or November, end right. of November right there. In December, I'm hearing that. The show has been, this movie has been sold to a network. So I come to find out a couple weeks later, um, I basically, I'm trying to find out what is going on and come to find out it was, oh, in sidebar, he, his other producing partner, one of the producers that worked for him, who was also at the time I thought was super cool, had called my mom, was like, oh yeah, we want to do an um, interview you because we're trying to do a um, documentary about girl groups or something. So we want to ask you questions about, you know, say my mom was going to do it or whatever, but come to find out he was the person who had did the deal with TV1 to sell our life story. He was, um, and my mom, and, and it was gonna try to ask my mother questions about us unknowingly to get more information, I guess, for the wow. show. So anyway, I just thought that was the lowest thing that anybody could ever do. Wait, so what, how did and he I have believe, the rights to your story? Like, he didn't have the rights to our story. What I found out, cause of course, you know, I was calling lawyers and everything. And I found out at the time that um, when you're a public figure, people mm -hmm. can do- Unauthorized. Um, they can do unauthorized stories about you. Right. And at the time, we had already done, um, like, a, what's it, behind the music type of thing on um, TV1 or whatever. Okay. No, TV1. Remember, Unsung. you know, how they, Unsung, yeah. yeah. So, you know, they had certain information that I guess they could base the movie off of. But my thing was, I was like, never once, all them years we have been around each other, he had never once told me that he was trying to do a movie about us and to be able to, and to go behind my back and to do that. And to, that's our life story. Right. I was like, I can't fuck with him ever again. Wow. I did not want this. I, I did reach out to him at first. He didn't answer the phone because I it was I had just heard it, so I wasn't sure that it was him. So I was calling him to like, yo, like what is this? He didn't answer my calls. But then when we had did some things to start like reaching out to the network to try to get the whole situation shut down, then all of a sudden he reaches out to me. And I, I want to talk after that. I was like, I don't want to talk to you. I don't ever have to talk to you again. And that's just how I feel. I'm like, that is the lowest of the low. Um our first, what was that? First spin-off was the, the wedding or one of them. I think our spin-off was the first show that he was executive producer for. Mm. I literally fought for him to be executive producer of my show, to be the lead exec producer. Right. So for you to go, for you to have somebody that you went out for, and used to, I always respected him as a producer to do that to me. I was like, I have no respect for him. Oh. And so for him to now, you know, every time he turn around, he got something to say about me. I'm like, I just give him no energy. But that right there, my life story, that shit gets me makes me emotional and it pisses me off. So yeah, I don't have no, I don't have nothing for you. Okay, y'all get in the comment section and let me know. Do y'all want to keep going? If so, we're gonna have to keep going in a different video because this video is already 15 minutes long. 
and I don't want the video to be that long. I want you guys to be able to grasp everything. And I know sometimes when I leave videos that are 30 minutes, 40 minutes long, sometimes everybody don't catch all of the content. So I'm definitely planning on breaking this down. And in part two, we're gonna pick back up on Candy and Todd. We're then gonna move on to Winter and Mimi Faust and then close it out with, of course, Melody Cherie because I have the most documentation when it comes to that. And truth be told, we don't necessarily even have to do Melody. She technically is her own video. Everybody really needs their own video. And really, let me know, do y'all want me to go in more depth about everything that's going on? Because I would love to. But I want you guys to also pay attention and notice how Candy mentioned that Carlos King and Todd were working on Hollywood Divas at the time. And they were having some issues with Carlos and production when it came to Hollywood Divas at that time, but they still pushed through and saw past the issues that they were having to work with him. And I want y'all to get in the comment section before we come back to the next video, the part two, and you guys let me know what you think those issues were now that we hear what Elise Neal has to say about her relationship with Carlos King and his production team. And I also want you guys to get in the comment section and let me know, do you think Carlos King was the person that needed to pay for her medical bills. Obviously, so that's what I believe. She's working on set. You have to pay her compensation. If she gets hurt on your set, you are the um, EP. You're the owner of Kingdom Reign. And so I think a lot of this has to do with him just not having the budget. This is why Winter spoke about them not having an HR. So when things were going on to her, she wouldn't even be able to call him and say anything to him about the things that were happening to her. They didn't have his number, so he wasn't even close to the cast in which he was reaching out to them. And Winter even said, they're not even making $2,500 an episode so did he really have the budget and the money in order to film a production with some of Hollywood's royalty? And yes, I would say the women on Hollywood Divas would be Hollywood royalty in the Black community because they were stars on a lot of shows that were prominent in our households, period. For that, when women go to Africa, they sometimes go with Quad or Yandy or... I didn't <laughs> Oh, we want to be messy. Let's talk about how you pay them people twenty five hundred dollars. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> well, no, we start out with that. Actually, when you first start reality TV, you start out with really nothing, right? We're not going to get into that because I. Okay. So, so we're we're good. They were good. They were good there. Yeah, yeah. I pull up Roto Winner County. I pull up Roto Winner County. Yeah, yeah. I pull up Roto Winner County. Oh, it's not in the case of anybody. That's why I'm not spending my life.